hundreds of years of tradition, recipes that range from rustic to odd cuisine. There's no doubt the French have developed one of the most elegant cuisines on earth. Welcome to gastronomic heaven. Join our food safari to learn how to make classic French onion soup, golden crusty baguettes, beef bourguignon from a master, and the decadent world of French desserts. One great thing about uh, French cooking is you don't need 100 ingredients. Pretty compact, with 10 ingredients you've done it. Mm. So you've got your base element and after that you just buy fresh produce. You know, in every city in France you've got two times a week a market, but that's part of the, the French way of living. Guillaume Brahimi is one of Australia's most celebrated chefs. Training in Paris, he earned three Michelin stars before moving to Australia, working in some of our top restaurants. In 2001, he took over the Benelong restaurant at the Opera House and continues to win awards. So, a French pantry, Guillaume, what do you need for it? Well, you know, like, this is, this is a dream fridge. <laughs> you know, like, uh, that's the way my fridge should be, uh, butter. In France, butter is started with your breakfast on your fresh baguette, goes all the way to lunch in your sauce and goes all the way to your dinner. It's all standing with fish. You know, just testing it with my mashed potato, mm. you know, you test the better quality butter. And worth spending the money on. Absolutely. We're not talking, uh, you know, you don't have to mortgage your house to have great <laughs> butter at home. Okay. But it's all, you know, like butter is good for you. Mm. I'm not asking you to have 250 grams of butter a day. I'm only asking you to have 200. <laughs> I'm a very big fan of specs, the smoked speck, beautiful flavor. Um, there's other things you can do than speck than just bacon and eggs. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, if I want to cook my beef bourguignon, I want to put a piece of speck in it. As I say, fat is flavor. Well, I, I do believe that. Yeah. So what other key things have you got in your pantry? Mustard. Mm -hmm. I have to say we're a big fan of mustard at home. You know, Dijon mustard, we take the Dijon mustard on the table with any meat, you know, we'll have a veal cutlet, some lamb cutlet, some lamb chunk. We, we put Dijon mustard. You, know, you can make a great vinaigrette using Dijon mm. mustard, beautiful. And one very important thing is to quality salt, you know, sel de guérin, it is the best of the salt for me. You know, when you test it, you taste the sea, and it's a different salt than the, you know, the salt you get anywhere else. The only problem with that is you be addicted with this product after ah. that. Tell me, Guillaume, cheese is something that you eat every day? I love it. Yeah. I love it. Look at that. This is I a can tipple. lock myself here and say, I'll see you in one week. I'll be saying, <laughs> can we make it two? <laughs> in my house, where I grew up, we have an average of six cheese. Hmm. I think three will be good enough. Hmm. A blue, a wash wine, a hard. Hmm. But I think three cheese is quite exciting. And, and you have cheese to finish a meal. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. This is more than just an ingredient in your hand, isn't it? Oh, this is gold. <laughs> this is... And probably and, actually, it? and actually, it's not gold, it's truffle. Mm. The, you know, the flavour of it is outstanding. It's a really strong, earthy flavour, uh, isn't it? It's a fungus, you know. It... Do you use them liberally? Absolutely. More the better. <laughs> More the better. I use them everything uh, in a Syriac puree. Mm -hmm. Make a beautiful pasta, shave that, trust me, they will go and say, what have you done last time? Oh, we just went to Maiva and we just have truffle pasta. What, what did you do last time? <laughs> Franz Vidal worked as a chef for 20 years and now works in an acclaimed patisserie. At the end of the day, she loves to make an easy French classic, onion soup. I think it's the soup you pass on from grandma to mom and daughter. And that's what I've been learning from my mom, you know, many years ago and see cooking and the lovely soup. The butter, melt the butter. 
and add the onion and cook at least for 20, 25 minutes. Let's cook slowly and keep, we're going to keep stirring. But all those brown bits, they're flavour, aren't they? Yes, yes. It will uh, give the, the colour of the soup. Now I'm going to put my flour. The flour will give the, the thickness of the soup mm -hmm. and cook for another two minutes just to cook the flour too. Water. Two litres. Two litres. Voila. Another secret. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a glass of white wine. And my seasoning. Salt. And I'm going to put some gruyere. Are oh, you put it in now? Just a oh. little bit, and it will melt, but it gives mm. flavor. That's a nice color. It is, it's beautifully yeah. golden. Yeah. We're going to bring to the bowl, and we will turn it down and cook slowly. Mm. It's a French gruyere. Put this under the grill for a few minutes to melt oh. it. And we put on the top of the soup in a bowl. Yum. Bon appétit. Ah, merci. <laughs> mm. It's a celebration it's not, of onions, isn't yeah, it? It's it is. Beautiful. Uh, Four mm. or five ingredients, and they're mm. just magic. Having the right tools to do the job is an essential in French cooking and endless equipment has evolved for specialised purposes. In big cookware stores, there's something for absolutely everything. Gabriel Gatte is one of our most well-known French chefs. Appearing on television for most of the last 30 years, he's been in Australia. He grew up in the Loire Valley of France, learning many of the regional favourites from his grandmother, then going on to train as a chef. He's the author of 20 cookbooks and has won awards for both his books and his contribution to promoting French gastronomy. What do you need? What are essentials? Well, in terms of cookware, you certainly want a couple of, of frying pans because the French people uh, pan fry uh, things like uh, you know, seafood or breast of chicken. And you really want a couple of uh, uh, pots, uh, oven-proof dishes that uh, you can uh, start uh, cooking on top of the stove mm -hmm. and then go in the oven. Now, this is the French tool by excellence. You whip your cream, you make sauces. Any, every time that you have to mix something or fold in something, this is it. This is a, a traditional French crepe pan and, you know, the French people uh, do uh, pancake crepe often because it's a celebration mm. dessert that you can make at any time during the year. Every family in France would have one of those and you would probably have one of, of your grandmother because it lasts forever. I think there's a real joy in making your own cakes and in France there's a tradition of, of particular cake like tart. People make fruit tarts because they're fruit trees. Mm -hmm. So everybody has got some kind of a mold which is really like a quiche mold. Mm -hmm. So you can use them for quiche but also you can use them for sweet pastries. When you think of French cuisine, you think of soufflés, of course, and this is a soufflé mold. So it's made of porcelain, it's very good conductor. So you can have large ones or small ones, but it's not just soufflés that you can make in that. You can make a crème brûlée, mm. you can make a chocolate mousse, you can make a crème caramel, you can make all kind of mousses that you can unmold. Now, this is a tummy. The biggest use is to sift some flour, but if you want to make the finest of a mashed potato or a puree, you push that through. So this is a, a, a tool for delicate cooks. How many knives would you need? Oh, I think you need two or three knives. You need a chef's knife that is about like 30 centimeter long where you are going to cut pumpkins and you're going to cut carrots, all the hard vegetables. Then you need a paring knife, short blade knife that you are going to uh, peel, you know, the end of potato and perhaps a medium sized knife that you can chop onions or do medium sized jobs or three, four knife and buy uh, the best you can afford.
It's important to have a good knife, a good quality knife, very important. And uh, if possible, always sharp, you know. Do you sharpen every time you're cooking? Every day, yes. Yeah. You got a prawn on, uh, Simon? Philippe Michel is one of the world's most highly regarded French chefs. A protégé of Paul Bocuse, he's opened restaurants under the Bocuse banner in Hong Kong, Tokyo, Houston and Melbourne. In 2005, he opened the Brasserie by Philippe Michel at Melbourne's Crown Casino. I can show you how to chop an onion, for example. Yeah. You remove the hard core there. Try to get your finger like that against the blade. So that, that protects you from danger. Yes, yeah. yes. And a lot of people try to go fast. Yeah. That's how they cut themselves. One, two, three. As many as you want, if you want the onion finer, you know, mm. as many as you want. Now that's a fine onion. It's a beautifully fine dose. So that's a chopped onion. If you do a stock, we're going to do a mirepoix, for example. It's bigger. It doesn't matter if it's not fine. It doesn't matter if they're not all the same size. Mm. Cut them in half. That's a, a medium-sized julienne. We can do a, what we call a matignon, which is a very fine mirepoix of carrot or turnips or celery. It's a small dice. A small but dice. You know, mm. the French got a name for everything. <laughs> French cuisine has become more and more refined over the past 200 years and France's top chefs have been elevated to almost godlike status. One of the symbols is the coveted Michelin star, a system that rates chefs and restaurants. It started as a guide for motorists sponsored by a tyre company, but has developed to rate a very small number of European restaurants of outstanding quality. Mejit Bougonu worked under several French greats in three Michelin star-rated restaurants and achieved two stars himself at the age of 25. In Australia, he's considered to be one of our most innovative and creative chefs. When he's not at his restaurant Absinthe on the Gold Coast, he cooks light recipes, like a famous fish dish from his hometown. <laughs> We'll be starting with uh, a little bit of potato first. I'm going to uh, peel it, slice it, and poach it in a fish stock. So basically, olive oil in this one. We have chosen a snapper. Season the fish only on the flesh side, as we're going to pan fry the skin first. So basically, the, the beauty of the recipe is that everything is done in one pan, the sauce is finished in one pan, so you get 100% of the juice of the fish. Mm. So cooking time would be what? Cooking time, I would probably say three or four minutes just to mm. crisp the skin. Mm. And uh, I would probably say another three or four minutes on the other side. Mm. To accompany the fish, Majit wilts a good handful of baby spinach leaves, adds olive oil, salt and a dash of fish stock. The potatoes are ready. His sauce starts with butter, sourdough croutons, slivers of almonds, small segments of peeled lemon, capers, fresh thyme and parsley, then semi-dried tomatoes. Once the juices emulsify with the butter, he spoons it over the fish. There we are, all the garnish on top. That's a beautiful fish. In no other country has the loaf of bread become the symbol of an entire nation. In France, they believe the best baguettes are only three or four hours old, so they bake right through the day. Before arriving in Australia, I'd never heard about square bread, you know? <laughs> it took me about 10 days to find a baguette in Sydney. That's 15 years ago. 
Guillaume, tell me about the French relationship with bread. You get bread back for the morning, you get bread for lunch, and you get bread for dinner. And some family get bread for afternoon tea. So you visit the bread shop, what, four three times? Time, three, oh. four times, yes. Yeah, that's why you've got such a great relationship with your boulangerie. Mm. And what makes great bread? You know, the touch, the hands, you know, like making bread is with hands, you know? And when you see the result of it and you see this fantastic bread, you know, I haven't seen a bread like that since I left France. What smell it? Yeah, it, it smells it, beautiful. It's just perfect. It's, it's moist, it's, it's mm. perfectly crispy on the outside. You just want to eat it. I don't know too many people who say no for a piece of red meat, braised mm. red wine, served with mashed potato. Like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about braised meat is you don't really have to use the top cut. Mm. I'm using Wagyu because I love the flavor into it, but I will have no problem whatsoever to use any piece of meat to do a bœuf bourguignon. So it doesn't have to be all the same. Mm. You know, just nice little pieces. So a little bit of olive oil. When I say a little bit, uh, it's my little That's bit. A, uh, it's a little bit French style. It's, my, it's my little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to cook the meat, but you want to color the meat, huh? And seal it. Seal it, yeah. Mm. Just nicely and slowly. You see, that's how we want it. Beautiful. You see? Yeah. OK, so that's, that's done. Yeah. The vegetables that Guillaume uses to cook in the rich stew include onions and carrots, tender young leeks, halved echelots, and really fresh celery, including the young leaves. Can you see the colour? Oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of thyme, eh? so whatever you see me putting, you can put a quarter of it, you'll be fine, OK? <laughs> So fresh bay yeah, leaves. Yeah, about six, eight. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I'm going to add my meat. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, was a classic. That, <laughs> that was very French, that, yeah, I, I have to say. Like, <laughs> OK, that's done. That's beautiful. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Of course, I love the specs, so I did do quite a lot. That would be enough. Very important point now is your red wine. By bringing it to the boil, get rid of the alcohol in it. Mm. That would take the acidity of your wine. So that's two bottles of red. Yeah. I put a touch of salt, just a touch. And a bit of pepper. And how long does that cook for? I reckon we're going to leave it for about a half an hour, 40 minutes, and check it. So what sort of potatoes? Simple, Desiree. But you see, they're nicely cooked, huh? That's it. Boom. OK, so you peel them quickly. So I'm using this tummy, OK? You're going to get a much thinner mash. Aha! You just pass it, and the result is going to be a nice, smooth potato. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Wow. That is... That is perfect. Till you see the steam coming out of it, it's not ready, yeah? So you're sort of evaporating the water. That's right. That's, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Hot potato, boiling milk, mm -hmm. cold butter. OK, I'm going to put a touch of milk. And this is the butter. Look at that. How much do you want to put? As much as you want. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. I put a touch of salt, but don't put too much because it's a salted mm. butter, huh? OK, so just... OK, you can try. Oh, my favourite thing in the whole world. How's that? Extraordinary. It's nice, huh? Mm. <gasps> OK, I'm just going to put the mushroom. And, you know, they really at the last moment. Some cooks thicken their sauce at this stage using flour. Guillaume instead prefers pureed steamed oh, carrots uh -huh. to thicken and sweeten the, the dish. Straight away. Great idea, this um, 
carrot puree, and straight away you got to. I'm amazed. And I'm going to put my parsley. Yeah. Look at that. So a little bit of mash. Ugh. Like you know, it's rustic, but that's yum. You know, like you want to. And believe me, I can tell you, there'll be nothing left in the in this bowl after you eat it. Mm. Very simple dish, but yum. Eh? And the bread also uses a nice My quality. My knees are bread. weak. It's so good. <laughs> good. It is beautiful. <laughs> From exquisite petit four to madeleine, perfect eclair to beautiful gâteau, the artful use of sugar, butter, flour and eggs is nothing short of spectacular. And then there's home cooking and Gabriel Gatte's family recipe for cœur à la crème. two egg whites. I am going to, to beat the eggs until they are stiff thick. Nowadays, you know. Oh, yeah. We are, and then when you see that the egg is almost firm like that, you add about two tablespoons of caster sugar. So we have it about there. So glossy. So the next step is to, to beat the cream. See, this is about it here. We don't want it to be too firm because we don't want it to become uh, mm. butter. Now, the next step mm -hmm. is, um, is with the fromage blanc. In Australia, it's often sold on the quark. Quark. Okay. It, is, it's a... it is very lovely. And we need about 200 grams. To that, we are going to add the juice of half a lemon. And we are going to use two tablespoons of sugar. Mix that together until smooth. Mm. Okay, so it's very, very simple. And then after that, we are going to add the cream. So that will give it a, a little bit more richness. So you just fold like that. You don't, don't overdo it. And then now we, we add, I might put that in the egg whites. It will make it a bit easier for us. And then we are going to fold that in like that. So you see this becoming very light. What we are going to do is that we are going to concentrate the flavor mm -hmm. by putting it in a mold uh -huh. with the, the maslins. And we are going to line this like that. And we are going to put this beautiful preparation inside the heart like that. So we, we cover like that. And then you put that in your fridge, OK, mm -hmm. for at least four or five hours. Uh, with uh, cœur à la crème, uh, you want some, some kind of a fruit sauce. First, you start with a little bit of lemon juice and, and some orange juice, and then uh, put that in a, in a blender. Just a little bit of sugar. So all together in the dessert, there's six tablespoons of sugar, all right? And then put about um, two or 300 grams of raspberries into that, mm. <laughs> into, into a puree. And this is absolutely a delicious technique. Oh, and the liquid that we get out of that, which is, look at the color, which is just extraordinary. But look at this, this is just so sharp. And then of course you need to be very careful to unmold it like that. Yeah, more or less. Ah. Okay, naturally you want to serve some of the coulis with it. Then we, ah. we garnish. With fruits, I think it's important to be generous with the fruit. The final touch, a little bit of icing sugar. Mm. Wow. That's nice, huh? That's a texture sensation, isn't it? You could woo someone with uh, oh, absolutely. your well, de la with, uh, This is a, a Valentine's Day special for sure. Mm. I'm sure it works too. Yes. Mm. On our next safari, we continue our French journey with a mighty version of the classic steak and chips and the lightest cheese souffle. So this is the dish that you make where you put the music on, have yeah. the half glass of wine and... Half. Oh, sorry, full glass of wine, but... <laughs> There's no such a thing as half in my house. 